Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. I'm Jace. Have a seat, everybody. Have a seat. Let's get started. Thank you. I'm Jace. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another Mr. and Long John Silver's Employee of the Month, Kendall Mark, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I feel great because we have a great audience because... Aaron Schwab is back, everybody. That's right, our the Bette Midler of the Twin Cities. The Bette Midler of the Twin Cities. She performs here. She's a wonderful actress. If you're watching us from other cities, uh, when you come here, uh, she's our Bette Midler. She's mm -hmm. our, she there, there's no better performer in the Twin Cities, I would argue, mm -hmm. Uh, money, you know, dollar for dollar than Aaron Schwaberini. It's true. And uh, now Aaron's been off. Now um, I don't want to embarrass her, but I do have a list. She uh, she was in the hospital because she had several procedures done, and I have a list of the procedures here. Uh, and, and this is in no particular order. No. She had an eyebrow lift. Mm -hmm. She had uh, her earlobes lifted. Mm -hmm. She had a butt implant. Mm -hmm. Only one on the the right side. That's right. <laughs> She had rhinoplasty, she had her lips injected, she had knee replacement, she had oh, hip yeah, replacement. Yeah. Did I get them all, Aaron? All of them. There you go. Okay. But she's fine, everybody. Yeah. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I broke about 14 HIPAA rules right there, but that's Maybe. fine. No, no. She's 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 back and this is just a little appreciation, a little monologue here. Uh, no offense to executive producer Jeff or Linda, who does it uh, when Aaron's not here, but there's a marked difference in the show and with the audience when Aaron Schwaberini isn't here. Mm -hmm. uh, she's magic. Uh, she gets, uh, you know, because sometimes people come in here, not these folks. No. Nope. But sometimes people come in here and they're sleepy, they're tired. 20% of our audience is hungover usually. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> 30% this, I mean, no. <laughs> Maybe 32. Uh, but Aaron gets them all ready to go to be on the big television. So mm -hmm. um, we, it's like, you know, you, uh, we always miss her, but you really appreciate something when it's gone. Right. We really appreciated Aaron Schwabery the last yes. few weeks. So yeah, we're glad she's back. And that butt implant's doing real good there, Aaron. Hey, girl. <laughs> How are you doing? I am doing well. It's true. It, the energy is just always so much happier and healthier, and she's just always I just love Aaron. Yeah, so because you know Jeff is afraid of people. Like yeah. he doesn't like a, we, he doesn't he barely likes talking to us. I know. He's you know like, what I mean? This so, glass box. Oh wow! It's a very pro Jeff audience today. <laughs> But he, he is. Jeff just likes to keep, like me, just keeps to himself. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have, so he, when he has to talk in front of people, it's a little, you know, but right. he does a great job. We you do a great job. You do a great job, Jeff. He really does. That's right. <laughs> did you say that? Yeah, I did. We got the rap. Uh -huh. We got yeah. the rap. Move hey, on. coming up on the show today, don't, don't turn. I think Price is Right's a rerun. You don't want to watch anything else today. So we get, we get really nice letters. People send us, um, I love that people still write letters in right? this day and age, mm -hmm. but we get we get a good number of letters sent to us. People send little gifts. Um, some of them I even put on our little tchotchke wall right over there. Uh, but we received something in the mail today that just knocked me right on uh, Aaron Schwab's butt implant. I mean, it yeah. just knocked me right back on my toes. Shaboom. And I was like, that is that side. It's the right side. It's just one of the sweetest darn things anybody has ever sent to this show. What is and, it? Well, you'll find out. I mean, it's a tease, you goofball. Wait. Uh, I'm not going to tell you now. Well, I want to know. Weren't you in the meeting? I don't think it's, yeah, I was, but I wasn't, you know. <gasps> yeah. 
people, you do that too. Don't owe me. You all do that. Everybody does that. She's been like this all morning. <laughs> She's been, a, we, all, we actually said to her, we actually said to Kendall, mm. we may cut your mic at some point today. You've been a little, you've been a little, a little frisky today. A little feisty schweisty. Well, the whole staff has been. So Aaron's back. Yeah. You're frisky. Uh-huh. Ted, during the Jason show before the show it show. It was so risque. On Facebook, listen to this audience. Oh. He basically uh, 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 dropped his pants. Yeah. Uh, in Full the middle moon. of it. Full moon. <laughs> <laughs> he did not. But right now, everybody's going to our Facebook page. That's right. No, he went to stand up, and just a little bit of his back is shown, and we laughed. I mean, that's that's the good thing about the Facebook show. Mm -hmm. It's just unedited. But <laughs> it certainly it's is. It's very unedited, so <laughs> go take a look at that. Right now, though, let's start this show. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> First up, let the Britney comeback begin. This could be one of the most highly anticipated duets uh, in recent memory, as long as I can remember. According to page six, Britney Spears and Elton John recorded a new version of his song, Tiny Dancer, not Tony Danza, Tiny Dancer. <laughs> Hashtag friend reference drink. Uh, they apparently met last week in Beverly Hills to record the song. The idea was Elton's and Britney's always been a huge fan and the song we're probably going to get it next month. I, I said this about Elton and, I, and Aaron Schwabrini I think knows this. Look, Elton is from a certain generation, but Elton keeps up with everything in music, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. He knew about Ed Sheeran before Ed Sheeran was on the radio. If you want to know what's up and coming or what's going to be around the river bend in music, you call Elton John. Mm -hmm. He's he is he keeps up with every tidbit of music. Well, and the Dua Lipa duet that oh. they just did, amazing. That song is that mm -hmm. I still listen to that song all the time. Oh yeah, so good. I just love Dua Lipa. I love her. I do too. The youngins like her too. So the I feel outfits a little... she wears are always like, girl. Yeah. I just enjoy her. I know the youngins like her too. So I feel a little hip the fact that I. I, 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 I am listen a youngin. To her. What, um, you're a youngin. I know you too. are. Yeah. You're, like, just... you're on the verge. But you're a youngin. You're, yeah. I have wrinkles. My 11s look like 10s and they're coming into 11s. And now you're just acknowledging 11s? it publicly. These things. I have 99s. <laughs> are you kidding me? Whatever. Whatever. But I'll hook you up with my Botox. There oh we go. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish, Discovery's uh, takeover of Warner Brothers has another casualty, and this one is felt across the late night universe. So here's the deal Full Frontal with Samantha B has been canceled. The show aired on TBS for seven years and was the only late night show on TV right now. Um, there is one on a uh, couple on Peacock. Uh, on television, though, hosted by a woman. A TBS spokesperson said the move comes as they continue to shape their new programming strategy. I, yeah, that's that's PR speak right there. <laughs> On Twitter, the show responded by saying Full Frontal was leaving TBS to spend more time with her family. Yeah, yeah. Whenever the whenever the TV bosses tell you, we're you know. Um, we're we're re we're re uh, reorganizing our programming strategy. Mm -hmm. That means we don't have the budget for you, and your ratings weren't high enough. That's yeah. basically what it means. So go home. And when people say they want to spend more time with their family, they're lying. Or when the HR person tells you, when the HR person tells you, we're gonna let you succeed someplace else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a, fly, little butterfly. It's a fly. nice way of saying. You are horrible and you're fired. Yes, yeah. goodbye. But I like hey, I I got I liked Samantha in the first couple seasons. I gotta tell you, her show kind of fell off the radar as far as the pop culture zeitgeist the last few years. Yeah. She, you know, she was making news like, you know, John Oliver's show, which is weekly on HBO, that thing pops up in the zeitgeist every week. You know, we run a lot of clips. Samantha, I don't know if it was because they I think they moved her around too much. But also, here's another thing, TBS which was the home of Conan. Discovery, their new boss, they don't want TBS to have, I don't think, any original programming. I think they're going to just go to reruns of Law & Order or something. <laughs> because, no, I'm not kidding. They got rid of everything. Mm -hmm. TNT, too. I don't know what they're going to do with those stations. Budget cuts. Yeah. Or just a, re, you know, yeah. a recalibration. Mm -hmm. They can make more money off MacGyver reruns. Why not put that? You know, or Matlock MacGyver? or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, Matlock. Remember that what? show with Andy Griffith? 
Do you know? Do you even know? Because you are a youngin. Have you ever heard of the show Matlock? No. No. Yeah, okay. Oh. So sorry. It's all right. It's it's even old for me. Like it's yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's like it's old. It's uh, yeah. I mean it's yeah. 99s. Oh, very yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish, uh, it appears we may have an answer to the long running question: Who will host Jeopardy? Or if I put it like Jeopardy, who is Mayim Bialik and Ken Jennings? That's right. <laughs> uh, according to Variety, Ken Jennings and Mayim Bialik will permanently split hosting duties. Sony, who runs the organization, has entered into long-term deals with both of them. Uh, in addition to sharing daytime hosting duties, Mayim will also host the primetime spinoffs. It brings an end to the two-year-long battle the two year long search for Alex Trebek's replacement. Well, thank goodness. Yes. Do you do you like I can't remember if I do you like one more than the other? Uh, no, not necessarily. And I think this doesn't really surprise anyone. No. I mean, they were like, we'll have multiple people and everyone goes, well, who else are you going to bring in? Nobody. I'm surprised, you know, the spin on the hosting the late night or the uh, primetime version. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. What surprises me is they're even splitting the daytime mm -hmm. roles. That's odd. A little bit. I, I honestly thought they'd have Ken Jennings be doing the primetime. See, my guess, I would have put money on Ken Jennings would do daytime mm -hmm. and Mayim would do everything else. Mm. But I, I, that's, but you know, Whatever. I guess this means LeVar Burton isn't going to get Jeopardy. What? Yeah. <laughs> Two people in the audience got that joke. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. We are just getting started. The Hot Dish continues next. We have details on a brand new dating show that I'm not sure we needed. Have fun. It's called Love in the Flesh. Awful title. Then, speaking of dating shows, producer Ted is back with the latest on The Bachelorette and a date with Grandpa? Grandpa! I have perfect. And it is an unbelievable gift from a Jason Show viewer. Wait till you see what came in the mail today. It's gonna tie you up in knots when we come back. like to give a shout outs to our crew if I never get enough credit uh, you know photographer Eric is in a faraway land for a couple weeks um, we hope he comes back <laughs> uh, but we have Gergalicious on the jib cam today doing a fantastic job Gerg is one of our photographers here at Fox 9 he does a great job. His real name is Greg, but we, nobody calls him Greg. Nobody. 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 I got an email from a Greg Kellogg once, and I was like, who's that? Who's that? It's Gerg. <laughs> it's Gergalicious. That's right. Welcome back. Kevin Hart was on with Jimmy Fallon last night, and Kevin talked about his friendship with The Rock and the time they did that uh, tortilla challenge. And that is today's Late Night Rewind. If you haven't seen it on TikTok, you take a tortilla, you, fill, you drink a sip of water, and you slap a tortilla across someone's face. Yes. But dude, Dwayne's hand was behind us. Yeah, I had to make sure he was holding it right. Yeah, because he, he was, he was going to do this. No, I think he was going to try to smack. I, I honestly think, I think he wanted to kill me. And, I, and I'm just being honest, <laughs> right? Because he had, his, he had his whole palm behind the tortilla. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's not how you do that's it. That's not tortilla that's slap not the, challenge. That's not the slap. He slapped with the tortilla. Yeah. He's like, just going to slap me. And then he's like, oh, because that's how he talk. He's like, oh, 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 oh with a tortilla. Yeah, you can't even. The photo wasn't even good. That's how fast I was when I did it. You know why I hit him so fast? Why? Because I felt like I had to get out of there after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is him slapping you. Look at his face. Yeah, no, look, he's so, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, he's so evil. Like, he really, sometimes I think, sometimes I think he wants to hurt me, man. Yeah, he wanted to like draw that, blood. Yeah, like that, why? Those two are great together. Mm -hmm. They were in a movie. They were in a movie about four or five years ago. I can't think of what it's called. Central 
Central Intelligence thing. <laughs> Jeff knows more about my schedule than I do, but uh, they <laughs> sent me to New York to interview them. Mm -hmm. And I walk in and you know, you walk into these hotel rooms. I've told you before how what these are like. You walk in and then there's the star sitting in their director chairs and then you sit in your director chair and then some producer looks at you and goes, four minutes, go! And then you have four minutes and you gotta try to form a, a, an intelligent question. Anyway, so I walk in and the Rock, Dwayne looks at me and he goes, nice suit. And I go, oh, thank you very much. And I sit down and Dwayne goes, Kevin, tell Jason he has a nice suit. And Kevin <laughs> goes, no, because I don't think it's a nice suit. And it was great. And then they went back and forth. And that was basically the interview. It was four minutes of them talking about my suit, but it was, they're great together. But they're wonderful. Oh, it was fun. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's what you, that's what you wish. That's what I, I don't care about my dumb questions. No. I like that kind of nonsense. Mm -hmm. That's great. More late night, Joseph Quinn from Stranger Things was on with Jimmy as well. If you guys don't know, he played the uh, breakout character of Eddie. Everyone loves him. And he's British, if you didn't know that. He said he almost actually didn't make it for this interview. Look. I, I very nearly didn't make it. What? What do you mean? I was held up at immigration yesterday. <gasps> Oh, gosh. Have you ever been to secondary? Do Have you ever been to secondary? Anyone? No. No? Oh, it's not so fun. <laughs> um, I was taken into, I guess what you could call it, it was more of a dungeon, and I was asked <laughs> to wait there for about 20 minutes, and then I was summoned to this desk where someone asked me, what are you doing in the United States, sir? <laughs> I said, well, I'm actually here to meet Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show. Yeah. And he didn't believe me. And one of his colleagues looked over at me, looked at him, and said, leave Eddie alone. <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> he said, who are you? And I was like, I don't, oh, I don't know. He's like, it's Eddie from Stranger Things. He's like, you're Eddie Munson? <laughs> and I was like, I was kind, of, kind of, he was like, do you come back next season? <laughs> I said, I, said um, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't and he know. was like, you better. Gave me the passport. And, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> the... <laughs> <laughs> I loved Eddie. I, and Everybody I just loved finished. Eddie, yeah. We haven't talked about this. I just finished the last episode of this season mm -hmm. and everybody acted i'm sorry this is going to be a hashtag on unpopular opinion everybody acted like this was the second coming of television i have to tell you it was all right i didn't get what all the hype was about with oh, the yeah. final episode oh, of the well, season everyone is like oh you just left us on such a cliff i'm like did they Are well no no it, it was in two and a half hours long i don't know it was just it's the mothership it, landing yeah it was good i just didn't the, the, the lead up to it, everyone was talking about how good it was. It was good, it mm -hmm. just wasn't great. I thought it was too long. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of how I felt about Nope. Go look at my review, I talked about that yesterday. Next in the dish, there's yet another new dating show coming to streaming. I, we, Thank God. Well, I know, I, we really <laughs> did need this. This time, it features couples who have only met and chatted through dating apps. It's called, and this is a horrible name, Love in the Flesh. <laughs> Thank you, audience. It's like our couch. Uh, take a look at the trailer. Five couples who have only ever spoken online are about to meet for the very first time and start dating in the flesh. Over the next week, the couples will be living together here, the most idyllic location to fast track any relationship. But just like in the real world, There'll be tests at every turn. These people are so sexy. <laughs> and not everyone's online spark will turn into real love in the flesh. He likes football and <laughs> what, what else? Both of you will be leaving my beach house tonight. Those with the strongest bond will receive an incredible reward to supercharge their relationship <laughs> in the outside world. <laughs> but they don't know that yet because true love is priceless. You can always tell what stories Ted puts in the show. You know what I mean? You can always tell. You can, uh, this what? He's single. He's not single anymore. Are you single? Oh, the audience didn't know that. Did we have, if we. Okay, can I, t it, it, there is, a Mrs. Ted now. Mm -hmm. Now they're not married, but he is. I know Aaron got 
<laughs> Aaron, it's all right. There's, but he is taken now. I know, ladies, I'm very sorry. We had to do some Nancy Drew detective work to find out, though. I know. Mm -hmm. But but Ted does love the dating shows. He's coming up in a little bit with The Bachelorette. Anyway, back to this. This looks horrible. I would have turned it off immediately because of that host. She's annoying. I, I didn't like her right off the bat. Oh. No, sorry. Just being, I mean, you know. Jason asked three times, what did she just say? I know. <laughs> These people are so sexy. No, no. It looks like a Saturday Night Live spoof of a dating show. It kind of does. Doesn't it? The yeah, way it's in the name and everything. And one of you are leaving my condo tonight. <laughs> okay, really? Ouch. First of all, it's not your condo. It's a production condo. And if we're going to be particular gonna be about real, these real. things. <laughs> yeah, I'm not watching this. But if you would, you can go to Ted's house or you can watch it on Hulu. Next in the dish, Disney Plus is not just for kids anymore. The streamer is now venturing into the scandalous world of R-rated movies. That's right. What? Seriously. <sighs> what are Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Pluto, and Goofy going to do now? Up until now, movies on Disney Plus have been PG-13 and below, but not anymore. Disney over the weekend made Deadpool, Deadpool 2, and Logan available. Those are the streamer's first R-rated movies since Disney Plus uh, kicked off in 2019. Now, analysts say it's part of Disney's plan to compete with other streaming rivals like Netflix. Hmm. I get it. And look, I, I'm not a parent. I don't have offspring. Uh, but I mean, if I, if I did, the parents have, you can do parental controls. Right. If you, I mean, so I get, if I was Disney, I would have done. Disney has R-rated uh, movies in their library, and they have since the 80s. That's why in the 80s, if you didn't know, maybe even in the 70s, but they created Touchstone Pictures and they had Hollywood Pictures. They created these sub studios in order to create content that doesn't go under the Disney brand. Mm -hmm. So I, who cares? Now, I mean, the parent can prevent little Skippy from watching it. Now, look, that didn't stop me when I was a kid. I no. mean, you know. We figured it out. Mm -hmm. But then again, we didn't have the, the locks. It, if you didn't subscribe, you just had the scrambles of like Cinemax and HBO. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Ask uh -huh. any kid, ask any kid or teenager in the 80s if they tried to look for naked bodies in the scramble. <laughs> because if you didn't, yeah, thank you. And all of you, don't act like you didn't. Because if you didn't subscribe to those channels, it, it would, you, the picture would scramble. So you would try to look. I was like, okay, I think that's. I think I found one. I think that's a boob. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And you would kind of, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, I didn't know. I mean, I really, I was, I had no idea. So. Is that a boob? Ah! Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> but uh, who cares? Let let a, let Disney do that. Well, I thought that their whole idea originally was to put all that kind of content on Hulu, right? Yeah, because they do own. They do own, I think now they own a controlling interest in Hulu. That was their strategy. And I got to tell you, Hulu is doing sometimes better monthly than Disney Plus. Hulu was really. Thank you, Kardashians. Well, and the bear, the bear. People love that show. <laughs> Thank you. The Oh, how quickly the audience has turned on you. Yeah. <sighs> Hey, one more piece of hot dish. Hollywood is mourning the death of, of another movie star, Paul Sorvino, who starred in Goodfellas and Law and & Order. He died yesterday, yeah, at 83. Uh, now, we can't show you uh, the video because, well, we can't afford it. But his uh, daughter, Mira Sorvino, won an Oscar in 1995 and brought her father to tears during that acceptance speech. It's it go Oscars has a great YouTube channel. Go to that and you can see it. This is what makes me sad. I, Paul's a great actor, but we're losing all the wise guys. You know what I mean? We lost yeah. uh, we lost Ray Liotta. We lost the Tony guy from Sopranos a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we also obviously lost James Gandolfini, and they don't make those dudes anymore. You know, they don't make them like all the why all the good fellas. We're losing all of them, and it's just sad. You know. Absolutely. He's a good actor. We're going to take a break. Like I said, producer Ted's coming up and an unbelievable gift. That and more when we come back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. 
Uh, for weeks, experts and critics have been questioning how ABC would move forward with not one but two bachelorettes uh, at the helm. I know I was wondering that too. Uh, last night, thank you audience, last night we got the clarity we so desperately needed. Look. Gentlemen, how we doing? Am I doing okay? Um, I know I am not who you were expecting to see, but I do have some news for you. I know you all were really excited to see Gabby and Rachel tonight at the cocktail party, but that's not gonna happen because the cocktail party is officially canceled. So you all will be moving directly on to the rose ceremony. No, what? Are you kidding me? That it really isn't the only thing I want to tell you all. Rachel and Gabby have realized that this whole thing is just not working for them. And to be honest, if this thing continues to go down this path, they're not going to find love. So at the end of the day, that journey is over. They're not going to find love on The Bachelorette? What in the world does this all mean? Will Gabby and Rachel ever find love? You try, you try reading this. What comes next? It's time to break this all down. And that means, once again, it's time for 43% of America loves Ted. Joining us. <laughs> Joining us from Bachelor Headquarters slash our control room, fully clothed, Ted Johnson, everyone. Hello, Ted. Good morning. Oh, Theodore. Okay, so what was Jesse Palmer talking about there? Well, it, every year they cancel the cocktail party and all the guys are like, oh my gosh, they canceled the cocktail party. <laughs> so basically they canceled the cocktail party and the guys were told that at this point, the women are going to decide which men they want for themselves. And so the men are gonna have to choose which track do you want, A or B. It's like those choose your own adventure books from the 80s and 90s. Exactly, which, which woman do you want? Okay, let's get back to the show though, like just the, this particular episode. So Rachel went on a movie date with Zach. Tell us about that. Yeah, so they, so they went to a movie premiere. And I was like, oh, this is cool. What movie did they go see? Uh, do, you, do you remember the movie Me and You? Um, no. Yeah, so that's the movie they went to the premiere for, uh, Me and You. And then it turns out, so they go into the movie theater and they are the only two people and then they just showed baby videos of the both of them. Are you, so that paparazzi was all fake? All fake. They got dressed up to watch baby videos of themselves. Okay, that's horrible. That, that's ridiculous. Gabby went on a date with Eric and Grandpa? Yeah, so Grandpa made, a, made an appearance last season, and I guess the producers loved him so much that they were like, ooh, we're gonna have you, we're gonna have you bring Grandpa on your date. So she's on the date with this dude who, I'm pretty sure he's got a, uh, Kind of a mullet going on. It's yeah. Sort of a faux mullet. Anyways, Grandpa went on the date. It was unclear if Grandpa was also looking for love because they did some bowling. And she kind of, it was like Gabby and date versus Grandpa and like other older grandma. So unclear what? if Grandpa was also looking for love. So they were trying to hook up the Grandpa too? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Unclear, unclear where where those that stood at the end of the night. Yeah, you can see that on Hulu. Um, so after the group date, things started to go south. What happened? So they did this group date, which we're not even going to show you that group date because they do this every single year where they do this fake wedding shoot. They do this every year. It's so stupid. Anyways, after the after the group date. They do this, uh, you know, kind of this cocktail party kind of thing where um, the men decided to tell Gabby uh, maybe they preferred Rachel. Take a look. Oh! Today gave me a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. And, you know, I, I, I looked at that today in my own life and like what 
my values line up with. And, you know, I do have my intentions fully for Rachel. Yeah. And I think you have the bubbly aspect to you, the, the goofy aspect, and you're a little bit more like, I don't say rough around the edges, but y'all want people to be very direct with y'all. And so obviously I wanted to make sure that I express that to you. Yeah, totally. I really want to talk to you because like, I think we can like joke around and just be like funny and, and, and just cause a ton of laughter. But I don't know if maybe we've had the connection that I think I wanted to have yeah. with you from the from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Like I think, like even if, like say if you were the only person here, I don't think I could have the heart to continue because at the end of the day, we're trying to find somebody for the rest of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But obviously like you're smoking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's not how you want to do it. No, and, and let's be clear there, baby uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. You're not exactly the cat's meow. Right, but, and but Ted, she's smoking. Ted, can I, can I ask you something? Because you, you can't hear the audience as this going on. I, we we got to go soon, but how do you watch this crap? Because I would rather put my face on a cheese grater than, than watch this. <laughs> because there are idiots that go on TV and they say, uh, you're a little rough around the edges, but I like you. Uh-uh, that's not how you, that, that, it's great TV, but then you want to smack the guy, and that's why I keep watching. I'm gonna go to the last question really quick, Ted. Are the teams, will, will the team stay separate? Well, so they, so they go to the rose ceremony, and they pick each, you know, they pick their lanes, they pick their lanes, and some of the men, three to be exact, turned Rachel down. So Gabby was getting dumped, Rachel was getting dumped, everyone's getting dumped, but you know what? We're still gonna have a show. We're still gonna have a show, and Ted, it did not go unnoticed by us that your Glamour Shots photos are behind you. Oh, these. Yeah. <laughs> Ted Johnson, everyone, there we go. We're gonna take a break. A great gift from an amazing viewer when we return right after this. Stay with us, everyone. Oh. Welcome back. So here's the deal. This is, I think you're going to enjoy this. Besides Dallas, it's the uh, iconic TV show that you hear me talk about almost every week. Anyone who watched TV in the 80s and 90s remembers this opening title sequence. That is the opening title sequence for Knott's Landing. A spinoff of my favorite show, Dallas, you'll notice uh, Alec Baldwin got his start on that show. Um, Knott's Landing was about a group of friends on a California cul-de-sac. Well, uh, I loved it because it was a spinoff of Dallas. And uh, just like that show, I used to watch it uh, with my beloved Grandma Mazak. Well, this week, I got a big surprise. Look at Lisa Hartman. Anyway, uh, her, that hair, uh, that was tremendous. This week, uh, I got a big surprise in the mail. A viewer named Melody sent me this. It's an actual script from season six of Knott's Landing. And here's the deal, she got it. She wrote to me, here's a letter right here. She wrote to me, because she goes, Dear Jace, I thought you may like this. I purchased a box of books from a yard sale about 30 years ago when I lived in California. This was in it. I saved it, waiting to find someone who may enjoy having it. You are the one it has been waiting for, and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. So... And it's so funny, so this is the actual script, and it was uh, the property of the art director of the show, a man named Ray Markham. His little tag is right there, and uh, here's a little video from the actual, uh, now, I gotta tell you, I flipped through the script during the commercials of the radio show, um, so I could act this out if you really wanted me to a little bit later, but anyway, this is uh, actual, a actual scene from the episode entitled Unchartered Territory, 
uh, which aired in December of 1984. And, oh, there's Broadway's uh, Julie Harris right there. But as you can see, it's a very, very young Alec Baldwin and Lisa Hartman. Look at who is now Lisa Hartman Black. They played a, a married couple on the show. Alec w was really good even then. Uh, but like I said, this belonged to the show's art director. Here's uh, his name. This is what uh, his name appeared in the opening credits right there, Mr. Ray Markham. And in it, the, uh, the lady was right, in it, is even blueprints of the set, um, which I just opened for the first time right now. Has an old library smell to it, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, look, there's Addie's, uh, there's, a, I mean, I'm sorry, there is the Karen and Max house. I'm framing this bad boy anyway. But I, I gotta tell you, when, when people do this and I, I, you don't, oh, there's this little stationery too, but um, it's always really sweet. Look, I'm, I say this a lot, I'm just grateful people come to see our show and the fact that uh, because I talk about it, it with such regularity that when people see stuff from Knott's or Dallas or Disney, people think enough to get it. It really means a lot for me to me. And I got to tell you, this is going to be shadow boxed. Believe me. Thank you, Melody, so much. I appreciate it. It's so cool. I'm going to make the staff act this out after the show today. A little. That's right. I'm going to have Aaron play Abby. It's going to be great. We're going to take a break. We're playing a game with the audience when we come back. Back in a moment, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> Never a dull moment, right? No. Never. No, no, it's great to be here. Some confusion last week in the Jason Show offices over one, produ one of producer Ted's T-shirts. On Friday, you saw him get a makeover into the world's sexiest man alive while wearing this T-shirt with the STP logo. Now, in our meeting, I'm not kidding, all of us, Leo, me, Ted, Jeff, Kendall, none of us could remember what STP stood for. We now know it's, it means science, uh, scientifically treated petroleum. It's also the inspiration for today's game time. Here we go. Today's game is called Name Those Initials. I'm gonna give you a common company name and you have to tell me what the initials stand for. Now, here is the good news. It is multiple choice. So, oh, there we go, yeah. Playing today, give it up for Peggy and Nora, everyone. Okay. Now, in the history of the show, and we're going on season eight, no one ever listens to this rule, so don't feel like you need to either. But wait until I give all three multiple choices before you buzz in, okay. right? Right, Aaron? Eight years, no one ever listens. Here we go. Number one, 3M. Does it stand for Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, Minnesota Milling and Materials, or Minnesota Medical and Marking? Nora. No. no. Oh, Peggy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peggy. A. You are right. Oh! Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing. Yay. Okay, next. This is a good one. I did not know this. Spam. Spam. Does it stand for spiced alternative meat, shoulder of pork and ham, or salty pork and ham? Nora. Salty pork and ham? No, over to Peggy. A. No. Oh. Shockingly, it is shoulder of pork and ham. Oh. I did not know that. I did not know I've, that. I've eaten it for, I, yeah, anyway. Hands above buzzers here. <laughs> did you not believe me? <laughs> right there. Yes. Jeff wouldn't lie. Here we go, next one. <laughs> BMW, does this stand for Bavarian Motor Works? Bulgarian Motor Works or Bergen Malta Waves? Peggy? I'm gonna guess in that C one. No. Nora, A or B? B. No. A. It is Bavarian A. Motor Works. Bavarian Motor Works. <laughs> and Peggy, just so you have verification, there we go. Okay, here we go, hands above buzzers. CVS, does it stand for Careful Value Stores? Consumer value stores or customer volume stores? Peggy. B. 
you are right. You are right. Yes. Hands above buzzers, here we go. Oh, this is interesting, Geico. That actually stands for something. Does it stand for Get Educated Insurance Company, Government Employees Insurance Company, or Golfing Envision Insurance Company? B, 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 B. B is right. Government Employees Insurance Company. Okay, next, ESPN. Does that stand for Educational Sports Network? Every Sports Person News or Entertainment and Sports Programming Network? Nora. C? C is right. C is right. That's right. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Epcot and Walt Disney World. Does Epcot stand for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, Entertainment Prototype Community of, of Orlando, Extra Payment to Get Inside? <laughs> You know this one. I do know this you one. You know this but one, But I'm not Jason. playing the game. Um, Come on, Nora. Be brave. Go. Nora. B? No. A. It is A. <laughs> Experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Walt Disney himself named that. Here we go. I didn't know this. Hmm. MAC makeup. Does MAC stand for makeup, art, cosmetics? Makeup Attitude Created or Modern Attitude Company? Nora. A. You are right. Ooh. Makeup Art Cosmetics. Oh. So you verify. There we go. Couple more. Nerf. Needful reusable foam, non expandable recreational foam, or never ending reusable foam? B. Peggy. B, B, B. Right, right, right. Yes. <laughs> B, never, non, I'm sorry, non-expandable recreational foam. Okay, one more, Jeff. One more. One more. Okay. TCBY. What does that stand for? Tasty calorie-free yogurt, the country's best yogurt, or taste the country yogurt? Nora. B. You are right. The country's best yogurt. Yay. Give it up for Peggy and Nora. They're both going home oh, with a Jason Show yes. money. And they're going home with our teleprompter glass. That's right. <laughs> it's an inside joke for us here in the studio. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment, everybody. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. For doing, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's time for the world's shortest segment. We told you earlier, Disney's uh, Plus is adding R-rated movies. On The Late Show last night, Stephen Colbert put his own spin on the news, look. But after taking a look at our underperforming numbers with adults, we've decided to adjust our content for a more mature audience. Let's do blue, let's do blue. Fun fact, none of this is snow. With <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's frozen in a whole new way there. We're gonna take a break. What is it? Oh, God. Oh, oh. Let's roll the commercial. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Now, we usually do uh, the surprise goodbye here, but I have a little surprise for Kendall, uh, for, it's an opportunity, no, 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 no. It's an opportunity to make fun of me, so just keep an eye on her face, because earlier we showed you that Knott's Landing script, and I make fun of Kendall, and Kendall gets, make, gets to make fun of me. Fair is fair, so this will show you, I, I, for whatever reason, I never took this home from like a year ago, this will show you how obsessed I was with Knott's Landing when I was a, a kid, when I was a teenager, are you mm, ready? I don't so know. So this is a scrapbook. That I used to, and I, I know this is so. You scrap up. This is why. I, this well, I, guys, I didn't have any friends. I stayed oh. inside. Oh, yeah. don't boo hoo him. He had friends. He's fine. Go open it. Let's see. I used to cut out. <laughs> I used to cut out all of the TV guide advertisements oh for Knott's Landing. Look at that. And I, and there's Jr. But I used to cut out 
all of the TV Guide promotions for Knott's and for for Dallas. Did and you I notice just, he wouldn't even let me touch it? Did you notice? <laughs> he was like, oh no. You can't touch mine. it. Anyway, I was a nerd and I'm very proud of my nerddom. Uh, programming note. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, coming up on Thursday, we're chatting with Bonnie Hunt. Right now, though, that's going to do it for us. Go out there and be yourself, no matter what Kendall says. We'll see you tomorrow.